Good morning, good morning, good morning. I thought we were brighter than that. What happened to the lady? Mm -hmm. But good morning to you as well, pretty lady. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let me get it in here. Let me get in on this. Meet your thing, baby. To get in, I like our topic this morning. Okay. You know, I am um, the thought, my waking thought. Mm -hmm. Very often, um, you'll notice our waking thoughts have a lot to do with our going to bed thoughts. Mm -hmm. But an amazing thing happens that your brain, when you go to sleep at night, your brain takes on less actions and gets more creative. And they call that just different brain levels. Like when you're up and you're about and you're moving about your waking day, walking, talking, driving, your brain is operating in a level they call <coughs> the beta level. That's mm -hmm. what that level is. But when you're about to fall asleep and during the time that you're sleeping and when you're just waking up, mm -hmm. your brain is still in what's called alpha level mm -hmm. thinking. Alpha level. Now, alpha level, the reason I'm going to this is when you're most receptive to take on influence, the most receptive to take on suggestion. That's why it's a good time, a good idea to read your goals before you go to sleep and read your goals when you first wake up. That's why it's a bad idea to watch the news right before you go to sleep. It's right. a bad idea to watch the news right when you wake up. It's a bad idea to watch the news, period. <laughs> and it's also a very bad idea. Another reason why it's a bad idea to sleep with the TV on all night. <laughs> because your brain can still hear that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Um, I agree with that. And I think um, I'm, I, I used to be a lot more conscientious about it. Um, but I don't think I am anymore. Maybe that's something I'll go back to. Because um, sometimes I actually fall asleep with my shows on. Law and Order. Yeah, or, and don't talk about Law and Order in a negative uh, way. Uh, what's the other one you watch? Paternity Court. No, I don't do that anymore. Okay, something ratchet though. Law and Order is not ratchet. Law and Order is not ratchet, but you watch some court shows. Not anymore. Never. Not never. Not anymore. Okay, not anymore. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. I mean, yeah. I don't know why that I, I have you a justification for it. You said that by so much of my world is serious, so much of our world is. Relevant and important. I need some ratchet. Yeah, well. I still need some ratchet, but I don't use paternity court anymore for ratchet. Okay, cool. But anyway, I don't know why, but I, I so don't know why. with all that being said, my waking up thought was: your gifts will make room for you. Mm -hmm. Your gifts will make room for you and place you before great men. Yeah. Now I said that out loud. To my wife before I took off my sleeping mask. Good morning, Dr. Deborah. Good I, was, morning, I hadn't even opened smile. my eyes yet, but that was my waking thought. Now, this comes from a scripture, Proverbs 18 and 16. Your gifts will make room for you. And place you before great men. And place you before great men. Those two stands stanzas, but one sentence. Your gift will make room for you and place you before great men. So I thought about that with my wife. I said, baby, let's talk about what does that mean? Hey, and then she baby, had an even better idea, you know, because she had a chance to, because I wanted to talk about, I thought I wanted to talk about, um, what does that mean? Your gifts will make room for you and place you before great men, you know, because I, I could see different ways of looking at that. Absolutely. I love that Curtis Bigelow is here. What's up, man? See you tonight at the men's meeting. Yes, sir. I'm, uh, the men's meeting is tonight on the first and third Tuesdays. Yo, good people. <laughs> Curtis and his wife, they got married around the time we did. I think they were a little bit longer than us, though. Okay. And, um, they're about close to our age. So we have a lot of things similar to them, you know. Well, we're grateful you joined us this morning. Yes. But we're talking about your five ways to find uh, or perfect your gift. Your gift, five ways of looking at your gift, five ways of exploring your gift, five ways of using your gift, they're all wrapped up in that thing. So my wife, she she put some, I thought she had already found a list. She said, come up with five ways to, to find and perfect your gift. And I said to her, did you already have the five ways? So I didn't have to think, you know. Well, one and deep, Wayne, she said, 2015, so you're a year older than us. Okay, yes. In your marriage, as I think we were married in 2016. 2016, yes, baby. <laughs> I have to tell her that all the time. I know the day. What's the day? Um, April the 23rd. Okay, Jesus. 
<laughs> I never remember the year. I remember the year so the that way, we met, I think. No, I remember the day, June 16th. But I don't remember. You do too remember year. the year. See, now it was 15. Right. And we were married April of 16. Mm -hmm. Now I know. For a minute. I'm going to forget. Anyway. Anyway. So we're talking about five ways to find a now Lisa came up with three brilliant ways I thought and then she asked me for two more and I came up with two more so we're going to discuss them with you today and see how you I would love to get your thoughts on these things but the concept is your gifts will make room for you and place you before a great man good morning good morning, good morning. so we also discuss and Brian of course when he wants to stick be a be a stick in the mud uh will overrule stuff. You have to say that, huh? Yeah, not to. It was a necessary precursor to what I'm saying. It was not a precursor or a necessary, but go ahead. It was. I thought that we should make either dad jokes or song associations a staple for Tuesdays. And my, Is that what I sounded like? Yeah. That's exactly what he sounded like. Mm -hmm. I enjoy having a bit of... Uh, consistent levity interjected and it also allows me to better plan and produce the broadcast so that we can have some segments that people look forward to what say you dad jokes and song associations what say you on tuesdays is what on saying. tuesdays yes and i said to her i don't want to do that every tuesday that's, that's what, he what said. i said and you took what i said and put all that stuff behind it huh I didn't put anything behind it. Exaggerate. Exact, no, there was no exaggeration. You were flailing your arms. No, you, were, too, huh? you were running around in you circles. Around too, maybe? No, you were shaking your head. Was you were emphatic too. about it as emphatic. usual. Overtly emphatic. As usual and overtly. Huh? Absolutely. As usual and overtly. Absolutely. Oh, that. Absolutely. Uh, Melissa said I'd be down for the song trivia. Amen. That's song associations. What do you mean so? What do you be trying to get a consensus here? There is a place, I don't need a consensus. There is a place where the buck stops. Yeah, and it's all in, in my place. chair. No, sir. In my chair. No, sir. Yes. So again, today's topic is five ways to find or perfect your gift. So let's go with number one first. Let's see. Number let's chop it up. One. This is from the Empowerment Duo. Go ahead. What do you do well without much effort? What do well, you do naturally well? just do well without much effort? Mm -hmm. That could be your gift. You know, do you just sing well without much effort? You just have an affinity towards fixing things. You can just. Figure some stuff out. Can you put things together in a beautiful way, easily and naturally? Mm -hmm. Do you have a good eye for something or a good ear for something? And it's something that not everyone else seems to be able to do. Yeah. And a lot of times what happens with so many people is that they take it for granted and they don't realize that it's actually a gift. A lot of times I hear when you see something, you might say, oh, that is so cool. Oh, that I just threw that together. That's because that was your gift. I couldn't just throw that together. I would have needed to sit down and make lists and pull this together. Some people have a gift for planning events. <laughs> Some people have a gift for putting together outfits. Somebody have gifts. Some people have gifts for eyebrows. A, I was a, um, an over the road salesperson. I went to one single man's home. It was a single man mm -hmm. had a home to himself, and the outside of the home was, you know, like the other homes in the neighborhood. weren't really particularly descript, mm -hmm. but inside of the home was not only immaculate but wonderfully decorated. He had art all around his home and. Everything seemed to make sense. And he just, it was a beautifully decorated home. I said, did you hire like a, a design team? And yeah. I said, did you hire? He says, no, man. I just, you know, the way I see things and the way he was, I couldn't get over it. My brother Jimmy does that. For a single man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy is actually absolutely the same. Not only does he have an eye for um, putting things together. He has an eye for making things look, he has an ability to make things look expensive and rich on a budget. And he can also put things together 
thrift, he can thrift things together and make it look like millions of dollars. Yes. And that does take a, an eye, a, a talent. There's a talent for that. I absolutely do. Good well, morning, thank you, Ms. Yvette. Yvette. Uh, we did have a great Valentine's, just us together. We did. Everything is Valentine's here at the McNeil household. And I don't just say that like in a corny kind of way. I actually really, really um, have been overwhelmed with yes, emotion you have, lately. lately because I am so grateful. That's the word I was coming up with. For so many things, but especially for my relationship and our life. And I am just grateful, grateful, grateful. I'm happy Dr. Deborah Dunstan is here. I think I saw her earlier. Yeah, she's on. Um, Lisa has been operating in gratitude lately, and it's been moving her to emotions. Regularly, like every Well, but it makes sense hours. because you're paying attention to things that you should be grateful for. And mm -hmm. it's like you said a moment ago, it's so easy to take blessings for granted. Absolutely. It really is. Like, I... Even I realize that even now my blessings over my food can sometimes make me have to take a moment. Did last night blessing the food? <laughs> I know, just blessing the food is like, oh my god! And it I, even now thinking about it is because there was a season where it wasn't this uh, easy. I don't want to say easy because mm -hmm. life is not easy. That it it didn't manifest this quickly. Things didn't manifest mm -hmm. this quickly. So, and and now I, I, I want to believe that gratitude had something to do with that. Yes. Being grateful, being faithful over a few things, God will make you ruler over many, but also I think being grateful over a few things will give you much more. Very smarter men than me have said, the things that you express grat gratitude for, sincere gratitude for the universe, universe rewards your gratitude with more of the thing Absolutely. more of the thing that you express your gratitude for you know and i i don't i was just sitting i was just sitting with um my husband yesterday we had we had two timeouts together on the, on the couch where we just sat next to each other and i was overwhelmed when i said to you my feet are cold and you got up and raised the temperature Two things happened in that moment to overwhelm me. Okay. One was that my husband my God. would just get up and change the, the thermostat. That was the first thing. Like, not like it was a job, not like I was a bother, but that I want my wife comfortable and I'm going to go adjust the thermostat. That was the first thing that overwhelmed me with gratitude. But the second thing was that you could. Yes. That you could. Now, you know, my thought was, how come she don't have on her slippers, her warm <laughs> slippers? I bought her warm slippers. She should have her warm slippers. But instead of saying all of that, I just raised the temperature. <laughs> I was grateful, 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 grateful. Stephanie Martin said, I spend money without much effort. <laughs> okay? Amen. That sometimes comes back to bite you. So number one, we think as a way to help manifest more of your, your gifts is um, understand that, answer yourself the question, what do you do well without yeah, much, much effort? effort? Let's go to the second one. Yes, let's do that. Dr. Deborah says, gratitude feels so good. That's why it raises our spirit, energy, and vibration. Love it. Absolutely. Good morning, fam. I'm going to presume that that's Bill. No, I'm not so. sure. Um, uh, Yvette says, good morning, Queen Brittany. Now, Stephanie said, Brian, you should have grabbed her feet and warmed them with your hands. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Stephanie. That is another that's thing. At least my done. woman and I. You, <laughs> but I appreciated having the thermostat lifted up. And I, I love it when people try to shit on you. I know. I didn't. I I appreciated. You should have done this, and you should have done that. <laughs> so number two is what problem did you endure with no support until you figured it out? Now I really want to hear your definition of this, baby. Good morning, Keisha T. So what problem did you endure, endure with no support until you figured it out is often a tipping point uh, or a tip or a secret to what it is that you've been called to bring forth in the universe. One of the things that I often think about um, in this, and it's not always a positive thought, but it is a true thought. It is um, the mothers against, uh, what are the, the moms? What is um, Mothers against drunk driving mad you talking about? Mad, but there's another one. Mom, I think it was about murdered sons. Mothers against mothers 
it was moms and mad mothers against drunk driving right so those two organizations i probably have one of them wrong but they were birthed out of the pain and tragedy that these mothers had gone through but they decided that they wanted to bring purpose mm. to that situation yeah, and they did. And they did. And those those are consequential organizations. They created a movement to bring awareness to a social awareness and training and school programs and making kids aware of this and that and taking pledges. Those organizations done major work to help ameliorate the impact of those situations on our society. Yes, and they did. And they did. Yes. Right. So sometimes your gift is inside the problem that keeps coming up against you. I'm grateful right now for one of the newest authors, the newest signed authors with the Empowerment Publishing and Multimedia. She is a mom who has figured some things out as it relates to having children on the spectrum, the autism spectrum. She had to endure a difficult, a very, very difficult um, scenario with having a child on the spectrum that that was on the um, yes, it's the SAT word. It's one of my favorite <laughs> SAT words, um, Keisha. I thought I had yeah, it's off. I don't know what to do. With. So um, the the word the word. I mean the the situation was that. She was under a lot of pressure for a lot of years, couldn't get help for her child, couldn't get help. And it didn't go away, right? It didn't go away. That's the other critical thing is sometimes the thing that you can't find the answer to is the thing that you are supposed to become the answer to. Good morning, Miss Phyllis. Um, today at 11 a.m. on One Word Conversations, the word of the day is harvest. Harvest and William Brown's special guest is Genesis A. Kemp, right here on the Empowerment Duo page and the Empowerment Network. Thank you so morning, much. Good morning, Alvarez Miller. How you doing, my sister? Brother Curtis, Keisha, good morning. All of you guys again. Good, good morning. morning, Taliba. Good morning, Gladys. Gladys. Good morning, Pastor Preacher. How many times have you heard that one, uh, Gladys? <laughs> Ever since I've known her, I've never said her name once. Since I have met her, I've never said her name once. She's always been Gladys, Gladys. <laughs> And she is a beautiful Gladys. Absolutely. Awesome. So we're talking about your gifts will make room for you. And what does that mean and how to put purpose behind that? Uh, uh, the thing you cannot find the answer to, you can become the answer for Absolutely. It. And that's often your gift. That is often your gift, your let's gift. You ready three. for number three? Yeah, number three, I think probably is a little touch of number Two, I should have probably used that example for number two. But what social issues do you seem affected by that others don't seem to get or to get as passionate? Those differently. Um, <clears throat> the ones that you said you seem to be socially affected by. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a uh, police shooting mm -hmm. that could socially impact you so much so that you're compelled to take an action. You know, it could be uh, children aging out of foster care that affects you. That's a social ill. Absolutely. That affects you so much that you start an organization like Home For Me. Connect with it. Absolutely. Connect with it. Absolutely. That's exactly why I connected with Home For Me. Home For Me is an organization that works with teens that are aging out of foster care because unfortunately when they turn 18, they are no longer children according to the state. And sometimes that means that they no longer have anyone to care for them. To Tonight on the Empowerment uh, Network, a healing moment with Dr. Deborah. And tonight's topic is if it hurt, it ain't love. 8.30 p.m. right here on the Empowerment Duo page with Dr. Deborah. I'm going to tell you, she has been knocking out it out of park. This has been um, What's Love Got to Do With It Month. This is Love Month. And the topic tonight, if it hurt, it ain't love, I'm sure is one that all of us can probably see ourselves in, see someone we know in, and may help someone to figure out that what they're dealing with is something that they need to get out of. Um, because we know Dr. Deborah's ministry, we've been under her teachings before. We've seen her preach and, and talk about these things. Tonight, I know her perspective is going to be unique for one, well, unique and not unique. 
Okay, but it's also going to be very, very personal. Absolutely. Um, if it hurt, it ain't love is a is a is part of a program. I think that she also has presented, and uh, hopefully we can partner together with Home for Me on that as well, because domestic violence is showing up in teenage relationships as well. It doesn't wait for you to become an adult for you to be in scenarios where domestic violence can impact your relationships. Again, we're talking about your gifts will make room for you. So we've covered three so far. The first part, we, the one that we came up with this together, the first part was, what do you do well without much effort? That could be your gift. Be your gift. Number two, what problem did you enjoy with, I mean, did endure. you endure <laughs> with no support until you figured it out? That's something that you dealt with that caused you pain in your heart, in your in your life. And you felt like you were frustrated because you couldn't find a solution to it until you became the solution. When you get that point, then it's your job to help someone else. The story of you publishing your first book. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So much risk. Uh, so much just it was fraught with frustration. Mm -hmm. First figuring out how to write it, then figuring out how to get the cover design. And I went through so many covers before. I paid money to so many different organizations to get the cover design, to finally put it all together and now say, now what? Don't know what the hell to do with this thing. To get it out, I want it in print. I want it, a, I want it to look like a book, not to look like a pamphlet and all of those things to finally figure out how to get it done. Well, then I had the blessing to be able to help so many others, actually almost 100 other authors. We're over 93 now, so almost a hundred. How far? You'll make it there in the next couple of months, probably. Absolutely. So, number four, babe. Number four, what is it that you always imagine yourself doing and you always dream of doing? And I'm talking about that thing that won't leave you alone. That thing that just won't leave you alone. You know, uh, you think about, um, uh, like I saw a story about the world's record holder of the fastest typist, mm -hmm. okay? World the fastest typist in the world. Okay, this is back when we typed on the typewriters and all that. Yes, good she morning, said, Brenda. She thinks about typing all the time. She mm -hmm. thinks about it even when she's not. And there's a popular movie out now called The Queen's Gambit wow. about this woman playing um, chess. And um, she started playing chess when she was a child, like 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. But she used to dream about playing chess. She used to look up in front of the ceiling and play chess on the ceiling, imagining it and end up becoming a world champion. The thing that's your gift, the thing that you can't not think about doing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. You know what's interesting? You talk about typing. When I was a young girl, um, I, I have mentioned this before. I was wait, I was raised by my great great grandmother, and she wanted like greatness for me. In the midst of her trying to protect me and trying to keep me and all those other things. She also wanted greatness for me, but she had her own preconceived notions about what that looked like. Okay. And one of the things that she felt was typing was for secretaries. Okay. And secretaries weren't great. Bosses were great, Ooh. right? Okay. So she put this block in my mind against typing. Okay. Now, when I dropped out of high school, I went to business school. And in business school, one of the classes was typing because they were, we were preparing for the computer revolu re revolution, mm -hmm. right? We were, we were preparing for that. And I could not type to save my life because I couldn't get out of my mind. I'm not going to need to type. My secretary better know how to type. I'm never going to have to type. And that mental block was so Talk challenging. What? About the stuff that we put in our head like that. Mm -hmm. But then to finally have a teacher that emphasized to me that typing is not the same as it used to be. Typing is not. Typing is going to be a part of everybody's everyday life. Now, fast forward to um, our kids right now. They're not even learning how to write. They're not even learning how to write. They're not even They're learning, learning how to write. And um, I will tell you, me and Lisa are about the same age. Uh, learning how I took typing in seventh and eighth grade. Mm -hmm. That was one of the skills that I learned in middle school that served me very, very well. Yeah, so that was more that than practical. Oh, we didn't have typing in my school. Hey, Glenda, yeah, good morning. Good morning. When you go into school in the Bronx, you're not gonna get stuff like that. 
whatever. Um, Deborah says, yes, there's a youth there's a youth dating and domestic violence prevention and awareness program. Yeah. And it's a free program available to the community. That's something that we need to co discuss and collaborate with on um, with Home For Me. So please let us connect on that. We're talking about your gifts making room for you. But th is th there's that thing that's in your belly. You know, well, like when I had in 2013 for those three months where I had a real job. OK, it was in my belly every day. I wanted to be a sales coach. You know, even during that time, Lisa's often said, you know, she's often healed me from this. But even when I wasn't operating as a sales coach, I wasn't trying to get clients. I was just trying to work a job. OK, I was I wasn't doing anything about it. I was doing a regular job, period. I wasn't doing sales coaching in the evenings. I was just doing my job only. OK. But at the same time, when people would ask me, what do you do? The words, I'm a sales coach, you just fly out of me every time. <laughs> I was, and I would puzzle, why do I say I'm a sales coach when I'm not? Because it's your gift. Because that's what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Dr. Deborah said, since I was a child, I wanted to help hurting people. My mom used to keep the Inquirer magazine away from me because it gave me crying episodes. That wow. magazine would certainly do it. Wow. It would certainly do it. It would certainly do it. Let's see. What is number five? Wait, wait. Before we leave this, do we have any comments to catch up on? Uh, thank you for joining us, Tammy and Brenda and Jewel. What's up, cuz? Jewel Bynum is a cousin of mine. I got cousins that sneak up on my show sometimes. You know what I mean? What's up, Jewel? How you doing? Um, but since you were a child, your mom used to keep the inquiry. Wow. Okay. All right. So we caught up on comments. So that's number four. And number five, let's do it, baby. Number five is what are you willing to do for free? Some people that's willing to sing for free or play an instrument for free or speak in public for free, you know, because that's freeing to them, freeing to them. Now, you don't always do it for free, but you're willing to. Mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey talked about when she was doing that transition from doing the regular news to a talk show. She said, when she started doing the talk show, she noticed that it felt like breathing to her. Mm. Like this, it felt like breathing now. Mm. Now I'm breathing because I'm talking to people on a set on my show. Wow. Absolutely. absolutely. She's coming to my mind now. When you get, she called it the flow. That's when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. When you get into the flow, your whole life works easier. You know, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing with your life, with your unique collection of gifts, skills, and talents. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm consistently blessed because I feel like I get the opportunity to do what I love to do. Yeah, with these logos? Which is to help others to use their voice, tell their story, and share what it is that they love with the world. And I'm excited that we get to do this again this Saturday. This Saturday, the Empowerment Duo presents the Empowerment Author Showcase Children's Books Edition. This Saturday at 4 p.m. right here on the Empowerment Network and the Empowerment Duo page, myself and Brian will be bringing forth the author showcase. We have some great authors to present to you. We've got some youth authors. We got some empowerment authors and we have some amazing authors of children's books that we will be sharing. This is going to be so much fun and it always is. You know, one thing you're going to notice about the children's books they're not just for children. The messages don't come just for children. The adults get these messages too. And I love it. I love it. These children's books, even the ones written by children, have applicable messages that adults can get and use. Absolutely. And I encourage you to come hang out with us, bring your kids or just bring yourself. It's going to be fun. Kids that watch this Saturday at four o'clock will have a ball. Absolutely. We have... Um, Kelly Little will be joining us with They Lit the Way. Shanrika. What's up, uh, Sonia Fenner? How you doing, my Benjamin sister? Benjamin will be joining us with Kids Love Money. They just don't understand it. We are going to have. I love that book. Feature from Mr. Randall will be on the set, along with a couple of children's book authors. We have Mikey will be joining us with his, his uh, financials. It's a financial book. Mikey is a youth author, mm -hmm. and he'll be bringing his book 
He's a kidpreneur also, and he'll be bringing his book to share it along with the King Boys and their three books. And I'm hoping we'll get Lisa's books, her children's books on too, interspersed. You know, we'll get them in there because she's got three. We're really, I'm really excited because this time around with the group, with the Empowerment Group Publishing, we actually have three children's books that are being birthed through the Empowerment Group Publishing process, awesome. which is phenomenal. And we are looking forward to making that happen. So what say you, Jewel? What say you, Sonia? The whole thought process of your gifts will make room for you and place you before great men. Now, I looked up and Google, I did a Google search and saying, what does this scripture mean? Your gifts will make room for you. Now, you will be surprised, baby, by, maybe you wouldn't be surprised, but these religious scholars, some have had entirely different views of what that means, you know? Some people thought the concept of your gifts will make room for you and put you before great men will mean that you'll be able to get in front of great men without having to pay any money to do that, okay? That's true. Some people thought it meant that you won't have to, um, that it will speak for you. You don't have to speak. Your gifts will speak for you. That's true. You think that's true too? Of okay. Some of them were saying that it'll make you, um, give you an audience where you wouldn't earn an audience in any other way. Absolutely. Some talking you get in front of judges because of your gift. Mm -hmm. It was just a lot of different things. Yeah. You seem to think all of it is true. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you, operating in your gift does open up it opens up opportunities. That's what it means. Even if you don't have money to pay for the opportunity. Well, especially the gift becomes the money. That's the point. Yes, yes, yes. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. Like everything else is ancillary to that. Okay. The gift becomes provision is what it means. Um, it, even think about the, the, the program we were watching together yesterday for life. Okay. Aaron Wallace's gift was the interpretation and application oh, of the law. Yes. That gift saved his life. Yeah. Not just his life. It saved his, his physical. No, it saved his life in prison because he then had something to barter with. Mm -hmm. It was his his gift. That's right. So every one of us. Absolutely. Stephanie, you should join the empowerment. Um, the empowerment publishing program. We are really going to rock this year. Like I said, we already have three. Um. We already have three authors with children's books. Actually, there's four now that I think about it. But um, but we have them actually creating their books with us in through the group program. So good morning, Leanne. And Leanne says, thought-provoking question, discussion this morning. Does anyone dare share what they believe their gift is? Now, because I now I do believe you can have more than one gift. Okay. But one of your gifts, do you dare? share publicly one of your gifts, okay? I think, well, Dr. Deborah did, and her her gift is helps, yeah. helps and healing. She's wanted to help heal hurting people since she was a small child. That is very, very illuminating to me that her mother had to keep the Inquirer magazine away from her because it would bring her to tears, the stories. Wow. Uh, Brittany says, join the class. Amen, amen, amen. That's right. Brittany's um, children's book, uh, don't let the wheelchair fool ya. <laughs> it's in progress. It's in progress. I can't wait to see that book out. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And Stephanie said, "I want to create a children's book." We call them not just for children's books. I call the mine that. Yes. Are so extensive and they reach you in such a way that it do, you don't have to be a child. And so many of our stories, at least Brian and I's stories, were created in talks that we were giving to adults. I was just about to say that my book, Why Rhinos Make Great Sales People featuring Mr. Randall the Rhino, I promise you, I have told that story only to adults for 20 years. For 20 years, I have been telling that story just to adult audiences, and it had never occurred to me to make that story into a children's book. Lisa had that thought, okay? Lisa's, it was Lisa's idea, and I'm so proud and happy that she did come up with that idea to turn that story into a children's book. Absolutely. Leanne says, I am an encourager. Thank you for sharing your gift. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we have quite a few encouragers in our uh, network. And I will tell you this too. Uh, the older I get, the more and more I learn to value 
encouragers, you know, cheerleaders, even if you would, those people are important. You know, I was, I'm telling you, baby, I was so wrong for so long of my adult life. I didn't want to be called a motivational speaker because I didn't value motivational speaking as much as I value training. I wanted to be called a trainer because I thought motivation could get them all hyped up. And before they make it to their car, the motivation could be gone. And I didn't want to be that. You need both of them. You need both of them. <laughs> and motivation is more important than I gave it credit for. Absolutely. Amen. Uh, Stephanie, thank you. Stephanie said, Lisa is a visionary extraordinaire. Amen. I do, I do believe that my gift is seeing inside a seed. I honestly believe that my gift is seeing inside a seed. I can see the outer shell, whatever it looks like is inconsequential. I can, of course, I can see the pain and I can see the frustration. I can see all of that on the outside, but it's like x-rays x-ray vision. I can see to the inside of it what fruit it's going to bear. Man, that's a great um, gift to have. Mm -hmm. um, some people think my gift is speaking and selling. I think my gift is hearing mm -hmm. and listening. You know, I think I can listen extremely well past what they're saying, and even if they're not good at explaining it. I think you have that gift as it relates to business and with your clients. Your um, Brian husband hearing is not so. No, no, not it's, so my husband hearing is even better. It's because, because I choose to hear. Okay, that's even better. <laughs> my husband hearing is on a fine, and I get more practice with husband hearing than I do with business hearing. So I understand. No, I don't think. What'd so. you say? See. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, Brittany said, my is. second book is another book for everyone. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is for everyone, but it also I believe that it is also very, very important to get into the hands of either children with disabilities or siblings of children with disabilities. That book, even the title, Don't Let the Wheelchair Fool You, um, Brittany, I imagine a 10-year-old girl, a beautiful 10-year-old girl in a wheelchair wanted to assert her brilliance and assert, assert her beauty, assert her authority and finding encouragement in your book. Wait a minute. I'm just as smart as these other kids. I just got a wheelchair. That's all. Okay? <laughs> I'm just as talented as anyone else, but I do mine in a wheelchair. Absolutely. Good morning, April. Thank you for joining. I have a friend in Greensboro. Go ahead. Stephanie says, Brittany, I can't wait to read your children's book. Mm -hmm. Well, the book is already written. Right now, it's in the process of being illustrated and put together. I have a friend in Greensboro. She's an amazing artist, but she's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she don't, her fingers are not fully developed like ours. But she's in a wheelchair or and she's, and in, a she's in a wheelchair. But she's an amazing artist, painting and drawing. Amazing works. Okay. We could get her on as a guest, actually. That's awesome. That's a great idea. Okay. Well, it is time for the song that we missed them. So let's we'll be right back with the songs after a message from one of our content contributors. Hello, I am William Brown from IamWilliamBrown.com, your self-awareness coach. You know how there are so many people out there that feel that they can do so much more with their life, but because it's currently not happening for them, they feel frustrated and angry and disappointed with themselves. Well, what I do is I help them tap into what is calling them or their calling so they can tap into their potential and unleash it to the world so that they can experience all the joy, fulfillment, money, and adventure they already imagined for themselves. Reach out to me at IamWilliamBrown.com or text me your first name and your email at 864-381-8139. And we'll have a conversation. <laughs> All right. Thank you so <laughs> much. Make sure you reach out to Bill. Now, the greeting songs. Mm -hmm. Her name is Lisa Santiago McNeil. His name is Brian Keith McNeil. Brian K. He says he corrects me with that all the time. I don't understand because why. when people Google me, that's how they find me best. I'm so sorry. When people Google me, is Brian K. McNeil. They get a lot more information at Brian K. McNeil 
than Brian Keith McNeil. You got to scroll through pages. And if you do just Brian McNeil, you see me and a, a bluesgrass singer. So the best way to get the most Brian information of me I will for try. the umpteenth time. Not more than the umpteenth. It's more than umpteen. Someone is on here it's and decided to Google me. I would rather they Google me under Brian K. McNeil. Please Google it, Brian <laughs> K. McNeil. Just Google him. Even if you don't need to know anymore. You don't need to Google me if you don't Google need to know. Them. Google him, Google him, Google him. Googleable. He's Googleable. And I do, I do, I do, I do, I do apologize. Even on the flyers or anything. That's the way I want it listed. Okay. Brian K. <sighs> And I am Lisa Santiago. And Make together it. we make up the Empowerment Duo. The show that you're watching is called Let's Talk About It with the Empowerment Duo. We've been going since October of 2016. Season five. Season, season five. Yes. We have a focus on our show. Personal conversation. Business information. And spiritual inspiration. With a little bit of shenanigans. With a little bit of shenanigans. We have an express ministry. It is economic independence through entrepreneurship. That's what we talk about. That's Some it. of you guys have been rocking with us for years. Some of you guys are consistent contributors to the show. And we thank them with greeting songs and greeting logos. Yes, that's right, Cynthia. She says, put some respect on that K. I'm saying. I'm going to do, I'm going to get saying. it. I'm going to get it. I just love the Keith. I just love you Keith. You but we I, I, I understand. And I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I understand. She said, put some respect. That's right. Okay. Uh, Bill, I love that commercial. William, I love that commercial. So do I. Dr. Deborah, I welcome your commercial. 30 to 60 seconds. I welcome it. I welcome it. I welcome it. And, uh, particularly any of our content contributors, if you would like to you give us show. your 30 to 60 second commercial, please do. Send it on over to me and I will play it interspersed through our morning network. And we're going to provide you with ours too. Um, Leanne says, I don't have the link, but you can just type Kaz Radio, K-A-Z Radio TV in the Facebook search and you'll be able to see the me the interview that she's doing or the Medicare advisor today on Mindset Matters show on Kaz Radio TV on Facebook at 2 30 even the name um our show is called Mindset Matters Mindset mm -hmm. Matters and I really think there's a certain mindset that helps people to sell their services better mm -hmm. there's a selling your services mindset Maybe there'll be an occasion where Leanne can find a show that fits what I want to talk about. A mindset that you need to have to more effectively sell yourself and your services. So up first today in our greeting songs is Dr. Deborah Dunstan. Dr. Deborah, healing and deliverance coach. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Dr. Deborah. Thank you for joining us today. Um, up next is Miss Melissa Price and bow, 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 Melissa's on. Now it's time for us to sing our song. Melissa's on. Good morning, Miss Melissa Price. Head a shot of Let's Talk About It. Dr. Beverly is here. Dr. Beverly! It's on the show. Good morning, Dr. Beverly. My brother, Curtis Bigelow. Good morning, right. Curtis Bigelow. It's Curtis Bigelow, and we want you to know that these are breaks. That's Curtis. That's pretty good. I was thinking, I'm just Curtis Bigelow, and I want you to know. Like, I'm no, just a I'm Bigelow. just a Bigelow. I'm just a Bigelow. Everywhere that I go. Yes, that's yeah. it. No. I'm just a Curtis Bigelow. I'm Curtis Bigelow. No. And everywhere I go. <laughs> no. You know what? There's a lot of Waynes out there. Uh-uh. But there's only one D Wayne. Okay. <laughs> that's not just not no another Wayne. That's not some average Waynes, but we talk about D Wayne. D -Wayne. <laughs> What's up, D? D Wayne, good morning to you. Sister Brittany Thomas is here. Is Brittany. Is Brittany. Is Brittany, Brittany Thomas, is Brittany, is Brittany, is Brittany, Brittany, it's your time, it's your time, yeah. Good morning, Miss Brittany Thomas. We appreciate your contributions, your daily consistent contributions. We appreciate them so much. Absolutely, dear. Yvette. Dear, dear Evette, dear Evette, 
Dear Evette, good morning, sister Evette. We appreciate you coming to us. Scroll down, baby. Coming to us so often. Here, honey. Okay. And it's Gladys. Good morning, Gladys. Gladys, Gladys. Gladys, who? What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> hey, Pastor Peaches, thank you for joining us. Oh, um, Glenda, 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 I got what you need. I can only do what I can do. At yeah, what you time. said, well, I got over here. That's what it's you right. have, it's but right. I don't. And it's not over there. So, so we still here, I want it, okay? I get it. I got it. Go, go. Glenda's riding on the freeway of love. Uh -huh. Go. Glenda's riding on the freeway with makeup in her pink Cadillac. Brenda, I mean, um, Glenda, if you, don't do that, if you don't do that to yourself in the mirror, because you're going to get your freak, your Cadillac by singing that song. You will. Well. Get it singing. in your spirit. That's right. Get it in your spirit. She's riding on the freeway with makeup in her, in her pink Cadillac. Get your pink Cadillac, girl. Get it, Stephanie. Life has new meaning to me. There is beauty up above and things we never take notice of. You wake up and Stephanie, you're in love. Keisha T, you've been hanging out long enough. We're going to have to find a jam for you. Keisha, rec uh, recommend something for us, okay? Recommend a song that speaks to you and your spirit. And Lisa and I are working in here. Absolutely. Our friend William Brown is here. Okay. Good morning to our friend Bill. Nobody, Nobody thinks like him still. We, we love, love him so and we always, always will. will. Our, our friend Bill. Bill. Good morning, Bill. Miss Bill uh, is here. Hey, you know what I want in all caps? You guys are my show. We need to revisit it. Your schedule was chunked up last time. I suggest let's do this. Call me. <laughs> we do have your phone number. We can call you. Absolutely. We'll get that schedule ASAP. Mm -hmm. All right. Miss Phyllis is here, Renny. Miss Phyllis is here. So clear the way. Miss Phyllis is here. Now we can all have a great day. Good morning, Miss Phyllis. Phyllis. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My friend Brenda's here. You know, it's tricky to buy a home or sell a home. Don't do it alone. Choose Brenda. Hey, choose, choose Brenda. 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 It's tricky to buy a home to sell a home. Don't do it alone. Choose Brenda. Hey, choose Brenda. 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 Brenda is also doing some great New first time home buyer workshops. Check out her page That's for more details. Do. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I was watching some stuff yesterday. Uh, the difference between people who are successful and unsuccessful. And one of the things is no matter what the situation is, the unsuccessful person can find the problem in it. Okay, even if it is a bad thing, they can highlight it, and make it worse. But the more successful person finds a solution with it. Solution. We're in a pandemic right now. I can't showcase homes the way I normally do as a real estate agent. That's a problem. Okay. But in that problem, there's an opportunity and you got to find. So that means I'm going to give more virtual tours. I'm going to give more virtual classes. I'm going to put position. I'm going to spend more time putting position people in position where they can buy a home and they'll buy it from me because of the work I did. That's what I'm talking about. Finding an opportunity in the problem. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's Leanne. It's Leanne. Time is a wheel in constant motion, always rolling us along. Tell me who wants to look back on their years and wonder where those years have gone. <laughs> We did Bill's song. We did Bill. We did it together. Cynthia Murray. Cynthia Murray. I got that sister with me. What's up, Cynthia Murray? That's right. Keep them behaved this morning, Cynthia. <laughs> I know, funny. I think that's it. I think that's it. Let that's okay. It. That's okay. Brittany said I was singing Yvette's song the other day. Brittany said she also missed you, Brenda. Oh, Brenda Booker, bro. Brenda Booker. Lisa and I both love this that some of you guys have met.
through this broadcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, and some of you guys not only have met through this broadcast, but you've done business with each other Absolutely. because of the association in this broadcast. Absolutely. That to me is the height. Speaking of doing business, Brittany, I was trying to buy the brown and gold bracelet that you have, but I didn't see it in your store. I want the brown and gold. It's a, uh, I thought it was a trio, but anyway, I wanted the brown and gold. And um, she says she misses you too, cutie pie. I, I think she's talking about Brittany, she's talking about but Brittany. I'll take <laughs> Thank you. I'll take I'll take a little cutie pie for the day. So I I think we did a pretty good job with the five reasons. I, I mean, with the five ways to find your perfect gift. Do you no, want to do a recap? Yeah, we can do a recap. I'm going to do a recap. I want to say another thing too about how important your life is to have something to look forward to having something to look forward to because you don't want to get caught in a um, cycle of working just to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something to look forward to. So with that in mind, Lisa and I took a small step to have something to look forward to. A friend of ours is getting married in a destination wedding. Mm -hmm. Okay. A destination wedding. That means we're going to go someplace for the wedding. Jamaica. This is Jamaica, man. I've never been to Jamaica before. I've been to Jamaica. Lisa's been to Jamaica before, but I've never been. Now, this is a couple of months out for us, okay? A couple it's of in months. June. It's in June. I think Stephanie going. Stephanie, you going. Dr. Deborah, come on. Y'all need to come on and go. Well, what we did yesterday was it got to the point where we put up or shut up. So we put a deposit down, okay? Now we got our money moving us towards it. So we're going to make incremental uh, installments into this so that it's not really big a big hit on us. So we're going to make incremental installments, but we're going. We took a step, okay? And you all can. You all can take steps to, like when we took our mountain trip, a lot of people liked that trip. Well, we took a step to go, okay? Every little step you take. That's right. You so we'll will recap. be there. All right. Of the five ways to find or perfect your gift, number one is Identify what do you do well without much effort. And you know what that is. You already know what that is. You know what that is. Number two is what problem did you endure with no support until you figured it out? You might take another moment or two, but you know what that is as well. This is a problem that confronted you or plagued you or you found yourself in over and over and over again. I'll give you an example. Um, um, Dee Dee, Diva with depression. Mm -hmm. She's dealt with this systemically for generations. And yes, this mm -hmm. time she decided to be part of the solution. That's her gift. What social issues do you seem affected by that others don't seem to get or don't get as passionately? Uh, Donna Lee Reed. Donna Lee Reed is children one. aging out yes children aging out of foster, foster care. care it impacted her heart and she wanted to be part of the solution um number four what is it that you always imagine yourself doing or dreaming of doing yeah number four what do you always have? and you know what that is it, it constantly torments you if you have a clear moment when you're working, when you daydream, you dream, dream about that. Mm -hmm. You have to go to bed. That's what you're thinking about. You know what? In addition to the things that I do, I often dream of singing. You dream of singing? Yes, I dream of singing. And I know I'm not a singer, but I do dream of singing. I dream of That's singing true. in some way. You know, one of the, um, I got stung. You know, I was part of a trio of kid singers, me and my two younger sisters, Tracy and Valerie. I was the lead singer, Brian, okay, up until I was about 11. You know, this started, I was like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Mm -hmm. I was the lead singer. And then uh, my mother said to me, y'all sound terrible up there. Every, every Sunday, y'all sound terrible, you know. And she made me feel like I was the reason why I sounded terrible. So I got in my head, I can't sing. Okay? I hate that story. Well, that's okay. Because um, as I got older, one of the things that I wanted to conquer was I wanted to sing a song in front of a large audience, okay? And I got a chance to do that at Baptist Grove Church on New Year's Eve. And I got up there and I had um, I had um, one of the brothers from the male chorus stand with me, but I got up there and sang um, uh, uh, the, the Pillars Made, um, not, not that. I know the song anyway, but it was a song about um, 
uh, it is well. I sang it is well. It is well with my soul. And I did a great job with it. But I was caught up in the spirit. It is well with my soul. And then I had dudes, the men started backing me up. It was the church was packed and it meant something to me. That is beautiful. And I think overcoming any obstacle is worth doing. Yes. I am looking forward to Saturday. So make mm -hmm. sure that you guys um, do put it on your calendar. Click the reminder. The, uh, the notification went out already. The Empowerment Author Showcase Children's Books Edition. Go ahead and click on that reminder. It is uh, on the Empowerment Duo page already. It'll be right here on Saturday. So we're looking forward to that. And we're just excited about being able to bring such amazing authors and uh, books and stories to you, particularly featuring and by Black and Brown authors with Black and Black. Let me just say this real quickly about that church. My Uncle Jerry was the pastor of that church, okay? And he was a very much an encourager of, of the kids. He would let us do anything to participate. He let me read the scripture, you know, when I could have, when I was barely all tall enough to get to the lectern. And he would let me go over there and strum on the electric guitar during songs with no lessons, no nothing, just go ahead. <laughs> That's the kind of church I grew up in. It was very much with it. If you wanted to participate, he let you. He let me. I think that that's how many of our children came into themselves or came into being. My son was a drummer and um, it started out with him just admiring the 17 year old drummer at the time and wanting to grab a hold of the sticks and just became part of his life for a while. Oh. Beverly says, Lisa, don't you come back here pregnant. Ain't nobody coming back here pregnant <laughs> at all. Thank you. You guys have a beautiful time. rest of your day. The sun is out. Make sure that you tune in to Coffee Time with Coach Ja at 10 o'clock. Come back for uh, One Word Conversations with William Brown. And then this evening, Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. right here on the Empowerment Duo page of the Empowerment Network. Dr. Deborah, if it hurts, it ain't. Right. Love. It ain't love. That's right. If it hurts, it ain't love. And then Thursday, don't forget to tune your programmer to be back for Stephanie with Heart to Heart Conversations. Tonight, the men will be meeting. That's right. Tonight is men. Oh, and tomorrow, Stories of Overcoming with me, Lisa Santiago McNeil. Looking forward to you. Bye.